With a blowout win over the Lakers, Steph Curry and the Warriors are rolling, and so was Trace Jackson Davis. They went to a lot of high pick and roll last night to try and draw out Anthony Davis, which created a lot of opportunities for TJD to thrive as a forceful roller. So let's review. In order to understand why TJD was able to operate so freely on the roll, we have to look at what's creating the space. In this game, the answer was a combination of Stephen Clay's ability to draw two defenders on ball screens and the nature of the ball screens. The Lakers tried a lot of matchups with Steph to try and make these screening actions more difficult, but in both of these examples, Steph and Draymond are exploiting three things. First, the weakness of Austin Reeves as a screen navigator. Second is Anthony Davis's drop positioning. And the third is that Steph's nearly always able to draw two different defenders, the same with Clay. So Steph is going to sink both of these threes, but always pay attention to where the defender's attention is directed and what the Warriors get from it, which is almost always space. So no matter what you think of Klay Thompson, it's impossible to deny that he still gets the utmost respect as a three-point shooter. The Warriors are running staggered down screens for Klay, now, they have many different variants of this, some where the first screener can cut to the basket, the second screener could set a flare screen for the first to pop out for a shot, and on and on. But usually, they like to involve a guy like Clay who can read the defense and potentially shoot, drive, or pass. But because of the danger of Clay's three point shot, he's going to draw the attention of both Max Christie and Jackson Hayes, which means that someone involved in the two down screens is going to be free. This time it's TJD rolling into open space because he notices that Clay draws this double. There's no one on him. Clay makes a good read, and TJD makes this bucket. This time, the Warriors are in good five out positioning. Clay and TJD are doing a little fun screening action. TJD is going to set this pin down. And once again, Clay draws two defenders here. Torian Prince and AD are on Clay trying to prevent this three, which means TJD can easily slip into this empty space and is wide open for the layup. Something else I want to call out is how Steph's three point threat eliminates any weak side help look at how tightly he's being guarded right now by austin reeves if this was maybe kuminga there's a decent chance that help would have arrived earlier and tjd wouldn't have been so wide open but he is because of the fact that that's steph curry and clay draws too So this action is initially designed to free up Andrew Wiggins for a wide open bucket. He first sets that screen for pods and then he's gonna receive this back screen from Clay, which actually leaves him wide open. You can see that pods maybe wants to deliver this pass, but it doesn't pan out. He's a bit hesitant. However, watch Clay Thompson and Trace Jackson Davis in this action. Clay is gonna pop out and TJD is going to make sure to block off any man that tries to run with him. And once again, notice that Clay has drawn two defenders, which, once again, allows TJD to roll into an open lane and get this bucket with a pretty good finish. So if you haven't noticed a theme by now, it's that when you're playing with elite shooters like the Splash Brothers, and a drop defender like AD, screeners who are adept at playing into open space can really thrive. So the Warriors are gonna generate a very similar action by trying to clear out this side. Clay is gonna set this cross screen, which frees up Andrew Wiggins yet again for a wide open bucket. It looks like Sarge maybe could have made a leading pass, but he's hesitant because Torian Prince has his arms up. He's trying to front this so that Andrew Wiggins can't be wide open, but that's okay because TJD learns from the past and he sees the future. You can see that he's motioning right now 
to get Clay to run off this screen he's going to set. It's a really good pin down, and once again, Clay draws the attention of both AD and D'Lo, which inevitably leaves TJD wide open to make this finish. Credit to Clay Thompson, who made a pretty difficult pass, and credit to our man TJD, who makes a pretty difficult finish over Torian Prince. So it wasn't just Clay who manipulated the Lakers' defensive coverages. It was also Steph Curry. We're going to show this first high pick and roll with Steph and TJD, where Steph immediately draws two and opts to shoot it. TJD still makes a great read here. He manages to roll to the basket because AD's back is turned and he does have an advantage over the low man who was Austin Reeves. But in this next possession, it's a very similar story where we're going to go a bit faster in transition this time. TJD sets a high drag screen for Steph, who obviously draws two. Both D'Lo and Jackson Hayes are on him, which gives TJD all of this space. You love to see how confident he is in his decision making. There's no hesitancy. He knows he's going to be wide open, and he always finishes with strength. So with this possession and the next, I just want to make sure that we highlight that TJD himself has great awareness on the court. It's not just that he's a benefactor of the spacing generated by the Splash Brothers. So what does this mean for the Warriors? I think as we close in on the playoffs, the Warriors are going to need bench lineups that can create reliable offense. Trace Jackson Davis represents such an asset. He's well aware of who he's playing with, how to utilize the gravity of Steph and Clay and screens. TJD plays well in transition. He's a great finisher, and he's been a lob buddy with CP3 earlier in the season. So with 17 points in 15 minutes, and clearly a strong connection with Clay, I think TJD is here to stay. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more reviews just like this.